Hello everyone, it's Don from the Cedar Creek RV Owners Club. Just want to cover a subject today that's pretty controversial. Tires. We've heard of China Bombs, we've heard of Good Tires, we've heard of brand names. Goodyear and Westlake and Toyo, Continental, Saloon or Saloon or Siloon, depending upon how you want to say it. Um, there's all kinds of tires out there and there's a lot of important things that people don't understand about the tire. As we go through this, you're going to see some visuals I'm going to post that help me explain things. I am by no means an expert. You know, I was always told that an expert is a worn out, has been drip. I'm just a guy that does research, has a lot of experience, has a lot of antidote experience, and also owned a tire shop. So I have a, a good understanding of what I'm talking about. But again, there are others that may have other understandings and, and that's okay. First of all, we need to talk about the markings on a tire. One of the first things you're going to see is the size of the tire. It might be 295 slash 75R14. What that tells you is the 295 is the width of the tread that makes contact with the ground. The 75 is the percent of the width of the tire that makes up the height of the tire. If your tire is a 300 millimeter wide tire and it says it's 50 for your aspect ratio, for example, 300 slash 50 R 20, it's 300 centimeters wide. It's 50% of the width. So it's going to be 150 centimeters tall from the inside of the bead to the outside of the tread. And then the, the R stands for radial. And the last number, 20, is going to be the width of the wheel. That's inside the tire from the bead, from the, the inside edge of the tire to the inside edge of the tire. The next number you're going to see is the load index. That's how many pounds that tire is capable of holding. Sometimes that load index will be two different numbers. That will be a single tire or a dual tire because it can hold different weights depending upon how you use the tire. The last thing you're going to come across is the speed rating. Now that's kind of important because a lot of times there are tires that are, have a great weight rating, a great load rating, but they're not capable of going very fast. A lot of special trailer tires are that way. They'll have a load weight of a speed rating of 61 miles an hour, but they really aren't designed to go that fast. Now, one of the other things to cover is the ply rating of the tire. The ply is how many plies of belts, or we should say, that are in there. So load range E has 10 ply, F is 12 ply, G is 14 ply, H is 16 ply, I is 18 ply. Kind of gives you an understanding of how they do this. Also, you have ST tires stands for special trailer tires. They have a thicker sidewall to withstand the turning and the pressures put on them because they're on a trailer. Now, all those numbers are great. That understanding is fair, but there's a lot of other things you need to understand also. If you buy a tire that's an ST tire that has a 16 ply load rating, but yet you can only drive 61 miles an hour, well, that's kind of goofy. What happens if you drive over 61 miles an hour? Well, it can lead to premature wear, it can lead to overheating the tire, and it can lead to blowouts. I personally drive 65 miles an hour when I'm on the interstate and when I'm pulling my RV. That's my limit. I see RVs go past me to 80 miles an hour quite frequently. Now, another thing that you need to be aware of is that there are ST tires, which are special trailer, and there's also light truck tires, which have a stronger sidewall than a standard tire, or what they refer to as P metric, or passenger tires. They have a P in front of the number, like P265, 75, 14. That P is for passenger tires. They don't have a very heavy load rating. They're designed for small cars to be moving back and forth. They do not don't belong on trailers. Now, I believe that a lot of people use LT tires on their trailers because the sidewalls are stiffer. That's awesome. 
You can also buy commercial tires for your RV. Now, on my fifth wheel, I have Toyo M143 tires. Their load rating is not as heavy as a lot of people think I should have, but I never overload my RV. I keep it well below the gross vehicle weight, gross vehicle weight rating. And the gross vehicle weight rating is the weight of the RV when it's fully loaded with everything you're gonna take with you, you're hooked up and you're ready to go. That includes water, propane, everything. I'm well below that. I generally run around 15 or 16,000 pounds when I'm pulling my RV. Um, my Toyo M143s, I believe are rated for 3,700 pounds a piece, which is great. I've got four tires back there. The way I look at it, 3,700 pounds times four, that gives me at least 7,000 pounds per axle. That's 14,000 pounds in the back. Plus, if my RV weighs 15,000 or 16,000 pounds while I'm pulling it when it's fully loaded, we got to remember the pin weight on the front of the RV is also involved. The pin weight is the weight of the pin, the fifth wheel hitch in the back of your truck. And the pin weight is approximately 20% of the RV weight. Now I'm just gonna do some quick calculations out of my brain. You know, if my RV weighs 15,000, let's just say 16,000 pounds to make it easy. If it weighs 16,000 pounds, and 20% of the weight, one fifth of 16,000 pounds, let's just say that's right around 3,000 pounds, maybe 33, 3,400 pounds. That 3,000 pounds is in the back of my truck. That weight's in the back of my truck. That means the weight on my tires is actually around 12 or 13,000 pounds. So my tires are well within the weight limit for what I'm doing. These tires are actually tested in excess of what's listed on the sidewall. But we got to remember, we don't want to go with in excess. We want to stay with what's listed because we don't want to have a blowout or have a heat casualty. Now, a couple of reasons that you have blowouts or tire failures or tread separation. Number one is heat. That's one of the big things. Number two is overpressuring or underpressuring, which would be tire pressure. All right, and number three is abuse. And you say, how can you abuse a tire? Well, we don't do it intentionally, but we run through potholes. We go across railroad tracks. We might take a corner too, too tight. We might take it and cut too short and we cause our tire to go up on a curb. Well, that can damage your tire also and cause premature wear or a failure. There are many things that contribute to tire wear. The best thing I can tell you about pulling your RV and protecting your investment and saving your life is number one, make sure you buy a good quality tire. You need to determine what a good quality tire is because I can't do that for you because everybody has different determining levels. Number two, you need to maintain your air pressure according to the side of the tire. If your tire tells you to put 100 PSI in it, but the sticker on the side of the RV says it needs 80 PSI, you need to go with what the tire manufacturer recommends because that will be the proper inflation for the best ride and for the longest life of that tire. Some people will argue that point. There's a lot of conjecture on that. I'm just telling you what the tire manufacturers recommend. Now, one of the other things is to keep your tires covered when not in use. They have these um, tire, they call them trailer tire covers that you put over them. Those keep the UVA and UVB rays from breaking down the rubber on your tire. Another thing to do is not use petroleum distillates on your tire. If you're gonna spray something on it to make your tire shiny because you like shiny tires, don't use anything with petroleum in it. Also, another thing to keep in mind is you need to make sure that your axles are well lubed. You need to keep your axles greased properly. The reason behind that is your axle can actually heat up if not properly greased and lead to axle failure. On top of that, that heat's got to go somewhere. So it goes to the wheel of the tire. That wheel gets hot and it transfers the heat to the tire, which can lead to tire failure. There are many things that can lead to tire failure, but again, a good quality tire, proper inflation and taking care of it will hopefully keep you on the road for a real long time. Now, one other thing. I have people tell me all the time that these tires will last seven years. 
a lot of tires will last seven years. My recommendation is anywhere from three to five years, depending upon tire wear, tire rot, and the tread wear of the tire. You can say, oh, my tires have lasted me seven years. I've made all these short trips and it's great. Yes, there's a little cracks in the sidewall and there's some little chips in the tire. Well, let me tell you what, if you just happen to be taking a short trip of 100, 150 miles, you're driving down the road and you have a blowout, well, it can be catastrophic. It can be dangerous. It's best to keep your tires in a good condition and replace them every three to five years or when necessary, maybe sooner than that. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you have a blowout on the right side of your RV and you immediately stop, you've got to remember that all of the weight on the right side of your RV was put on the other tire that's on that side. Now I'm saying this, saying that you have two axles or, or with the indication you have two axles. If you have a blowout on one side, all the weight on that side of the RV is now put on the good tire. You pull over, you stop, you change your tire. A lot of times, a lot of times you'll drive two, three, 400 miles down the road and that other tire on that same side will blow out. Why? Because it had undue stress and undue weight as soon as that first tire blew out. Even if you only went three or 400 yards, it was still twice the weight that it's used to. Another thing to keep in mind is that your spare tire, always look at your spare tire, inspect it, and make sure it's properly inflated before every trip. A lot of folks, me included, carry two spare tires. I have one spare tire in the back of my truck. I have one spare tire under the RV. Why? Just in case I have a blowout or two at the same time. I've seen it driving down the road on, on fifth wheels and, can, and uh, travel trailers before. I highly recommend you travel with two spares. Some people say, well, that's, that's a waste of money. That's time. I've got RV travel service. They can bring me tires. That is true. It's a great program. I also have travel service for my RV, but I have an impact wrench. I have a floor jack. I know that I can get out. I can take the bad tires off, put the spares on and get on down the road. A lot of times you may end up sitting four, five, six hours for an auto service to come change your tire. And you also may end up having to pay twice the price for one tire because there is a significant upcharge for them to bring a tire out and put it on your RV. These are just things to think about. Again, everybody has their opinions. I'm not an expert. All I'm trying to do is get you thinking about being safe and about having good tires on your RV. Whatever brand you choose, whatever brand you use, I hope that you never have a blowout. I hope you get full life out of your tires and I hope you're able to enjoy your RV as much as I want to be able to enjoy mine. Stay tuned, there's gonna be a whole lot more videos when we get around to it. Thanks.